welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you a 2011 FCS conference preview on the Big Sky Conference. We're going to take a look at this conference top to bottom. So let's start with the recruiting trail to see how well these teams recruited this past offseason. Best recruiting class in the Big Sky. I'm going with Weber State. I like what they've done overall. A well-balanced class that addressed a lot of needs, especially at the skill position spot. But the biggest signing has to be quarterback Benjamin Morales. This guy is going to be an outstanding player. Throws well on a run. A very accurate passer and has a lot of moxie. And that's what you have to like out of your quarterbacks. Some key recruits in the Big Sky. You look at Eastern Washington quarterback. This guy played in a similar system in high school, and he brings a lot of explosiveness out of that quarterback position. Old school is how I would describe linebacker Ben Hemuli that signed with Idaho State 6'1", 245, and has a lot of strength once he gets to the point of attack. Montana State got an outstanding cornerback in Jamarcus Darden. This guy I really like very good ball skills and has amazing footwork and body control, and that's what you need as a cornerback. Trent McKinney is going to be a special player at Montana. You know they love those dual threat quarterbacks, and he fits that to a T. Austin Haskett, with his amazing blitzing ability, will fit in nicely to that Northern Arizona defense because they want to get more aggressive this year. Getting Haskett solidifies that issue. You look at Northern Colorado, getting a, a defensive back in Kyle Griffin. This guy is 6'2", 195, probably going to play safety, and he's going to be a good one for the Bears. At 6'3", 285 pounds, Cornelius Edison is going to be a force in that Portland State defense, which is already a very stout group. What I like most about Justin Cox, the wide receiver for Sacramento State, is his ability to lay out for footballs, which means he has amazing body control, and that's what you need as a wide receiver. Some Big Sky Conference apparel to starting with the best quarterbacks in the conference. I'm going with Montana State. They have a solid group of guys led by their talented player, Daenerys McGee. This guy is outstanding, very good player, good leader as well. And they have some depth behind him. Junior college transfer, Grayson Galloway is another guy that I really like. So overall, they have a very solid group. Best group of running backs. This was a tough choice, but I'm going to have to go with Portland State. They have an explosive duo of guys. You look at Corey McCaffrey, his 1,300 yards and over 10 touchdowns and 5.6 and yards of carry. But also Willie Griffin is a guy that has a lot of power and runs great in between the tackles. Best receiving core in the Big Sky Conference. I'm going to go with Eastern Washington. I love the trio of guys of Brandon Kaufman, Nicholas Edwards, and also Greg Hurd. These guys actually make Bo Levi Mitchell's job a lot easier. Very explosive guys. You look at a guy like Brandon Kaufman, 16 yards a catch, 1,200 yards receiving and 15 touchdowns. It's a very explosive group here. Best offensive line. I'm going with Weber State. The offense may have lost a lot of playmakers at the receiver, quarterback, and running back spot. But with these guys up front like J.C. Oram and also Caleb Turner, there's a lot to like about the Wildcats. Best D-line in the Big Sky, you have to give it to the Montana Grizzlies. These guys live in the backfield, and they're very active at the line of scrimmage. Anytime you have a defensive tackle and Brian Walhauser getting five sacks, there's a lot to like about this defensive line. Best linebacking core, I'm going to go with the Idaho State Bengals. These guys have a bevy of talent at this position. You look at linebacker A.J. Storms, and it's 146 tackles, and Basim Houdin with 100 tackles. And there's an influx of incoming freshmen that's going to see a lot of playing time as well. Best defensive backs, I'm going with the Montana Grizzlies. Anytime you have the best cornerback in Tremaine Johnson with his seven interceptions, they also have a great safety in Mike McCord. This guy makes a lot of tackles, but they're going to break in another cornerback. So even though they lost those All-Americans last year, they're still going to be very solid in the back half of their defense. Best special teams unit, the Bengals get my vote again. They have the best punter in David Harrington. Guy averages over 44 yards a kick and the best returner in the conference. And to boy Moore, over 1,000 yards on kickoff returns, two touchdowns, 24 yards of return. This guy is explosive. Big Sky Offensive MVP, I'm going with Montana State's Denarius McGee. 23 touchdown passes, six interceptions, which tells me he protects the football and also completes 62% of his passes, which also tells me he's a very accurate passer, a tremendous leader for the Bobcats. Defensive MVP, I'm going with Northern Arizona's Isaac Bond. Five and a half sacks, 31 tackles. This guy is a relentless pass rusher and also has a wide array of moves at the line of scrimmage. Freshman of the year, I'm going to go with the defensive side of football, Jamarcus Darden of Montana State. I love the way he plays cornerback, tremendous ball skills, a guy that's like a receiver back there in the secondary. So when you have that type of ability, you're going to always be around the football. And you're going to always judge it as if you're the receiver and make a lot of plays. 
best pro prospect. I'm going with Tremaine Johnson of Montana. Four interceptions he, he had last season. But a guy is 6'2", 200 pounds, very solid frame, and may end up being a free safety at the next level, but he has that type of versatility. Team on the rise in the big sky. I'm going with Sacramento State. I like the direction they're headed. They have a great coaching staff. They also have a lot of depth on this roster. A very sound recruiting class. So with those steps, they've been nipping at the hills for a long time. And I think they're on the cusp of breaking through. Toughest schedule. I'm going with Northern Colorado. I could have given it to Eastern Washington, but the Bears have a tough slate. You look at the road games, all the tough games. Colorado State, Montana, Eastern Washington, Northern Arizona. That's going to be tough for a team that's rebuilding on defense. Here are my Big Sky Conference predictions. At number nine, I have Idaho State. Reasons for optimism. I love the wide receiver depth on this roster. And I also like the linebackers and special teams. That's going to give them a shot to compete. Causes for concern. The rest of that defense, they're rebuilding. They gave up a lot of yards and points. And offensively, they need to answer the question at quarterback. But what we will learn is that Idaho State is probably a year away from getting back to respectability. Number eight, I have Northern Colorado. Reasons for optimism. You have to love the wide receivers. Four guys average over 15 yards a catch, so there's a lot of explosiveness out of that unit. And defensively, they return a lot of key cogs to that unit. Causes for concern. What happens to the running game? Who's going to step up and be the running back? And also defensively, can they stop the bleeding in the secondary? But what we will learn is that Northern Colorado has enough talent to pull off an upset or two on the road. Next up is Northern Arizona. Reasons for optimism. You have to love the ground game. These guys average over five and a half yards a carry. And the defensive line is very aggressive. They can stop the run. And I love the depth at the wide receiver position. Causes for concern, the secondary. They lost a lot of key guys back there. Can they stop the pass? And they have a huge question at quarterback. Who's going to be the guy? Can they get some production to carry on that passing game? But what we will learn is that Northern Arizona has enough talent still to win in this conference. At number six is Weaver State. Reasons for optimism. The offensive line is going to help ease in a new quarterback and get that running game back to where it was last season. And the defense is going to get better with seven starters returning. Causes for concern. I look at the quarterback spot. Can he replace Cameron Higgins? And is running back Josh Booker ready for the big time? But what we will learn is that Weaver State has a nice schedule on the back end that sets up for success. Next up is Portland State. Reasons for optimism. Corey McCaffrey and Willie Griffin is going to lead that unit on the ground. Very talented tailback duo. And quarterback Connor Cavanaugh does a great job of keeping the offense on pace. Causes for concern. Defensively, they gave up 40 points a game. And there's nine starters returning. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But what we'll learn is that they're going to outscore some people. And they're going to prove they can win on the road this season number four I have the Grizzlies reasons for optimism defensively they're very strong and they're going to be just as solid as they were last season and also offensively I like the fact that they have some talented wide receivers so whoever's going to be the quarterback has some nice targets to throw to causes for concern is that quarterback position will Nick Montana win a job who's going to be the starter because they lost two talented guys last season but what we will learn is that Montana will win more games defensively this year than last Next up is Sacramento State. Reasons for optimism. Offensively, they have a great dual threat quarterback in Jeff Fleming. 23 touchdowns throwing the football and also had over 400 yards rushing. And they, Brian Hilliard is one of the best backs in the conference. And they also have some great playmakers at wide receiver. Defensively, they have one of the best players in the country, regardless of division. Zach Nass, 13 sacks. But causes for concern is that offensive line. They lost some key players, some all-conference players, but can they recover? But what we will learn is that Sacramento State has enough firepower to push for a conference title. At number two, I have the reigning national champions. Reasons for optimism, the entire passing offense returns, so they should continue to light up scoreboards this season, led by quarterback Bo Levi Mitchell. And defensively, they're very talented. There's a lot of talented playmakers in the law firm of Johnson Johnson had over 200 tackles combined last season. Causes for concern. Can they replace Tywan Jones in his 1,700 yards? That was the straw that stirred the Eastern Washington drink. But what we will learn is that you look at this team top to bottom, and they still have enough talent and speed to win a national title. At number one, I have Montana State. Reasons for optimism. Offensively, I think they're going to be fine, especially in the passing game when you have the Narius McGee quarterback and three talented wide receivers to throw the football to. And defensively, I love their secondary and their linebackers. Causes for concern, the running game. Can they find a running back? And then on defense, the defensive line lost a lot of key players. But what we will learn is that Rob Ash will do a great job of coaching these guys to a conference title. 
more FCS conference previews, visit footballgameplan.com slash FCS or visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan. And listen to the Football Game Plan radio show, which airs Saturdays, 11 a.m. Eastern time at blogtalkradio.com slash footballgameplan.